This is not common, right? Like this is a really, really good stable system. I want to talk to you about our Spintron adventure for our Gen 5 LT program. We worked with John at CID and also Ben Strader at EFA University. We wanted to, to test and develop some new product because we wanted big lift, big RPM, hydraulic roller performance in our Gen 5 LT platform. For those of you that don't know, a Spintron basically is valve train testing uh, where you're spinning the valve train up on an engine, basically what looks like an engine dyno, but it's a Spintron. So it's spinning the engine, the RPM, the valve train, the RPM, and you're able to track with a laser on each valve the dynamics of the valve train to see when the valve train gets out of shape. It's just an electric motor. That's not what makes us, the, the fact that you have a Spintron doesn't mean anything. If you can't interpret, analyze, and provide good data to the customer, our customer and our team, to be able to make the proper changes, that's what makes a Spintron special. And We started with a blank slate CID LT casting, and when I mean blank slate, I mean there wasn't a valve guide machine, there wasn't a valve seat machine, there wasn't a rocker arm pedestal machine because we worked with John at CID and asked him to give us the widest of pieces of paper, the blankest of slates because we want things exactly where we have to have them as dictated by geometry. And we can't do that unless we have a good casting that leaves us room for interpretation. So we even had to completely redesign the cylinder head as far as the pedestal position so that the, so that the valve train geometry would be correct. So this particular cylinder head is a completely different part number from all the other CID LT offerings. And this is one that's proprietary only to, uh, to Kinshasa GPI because we worked with them on the development of this head. Late March, we, uh, we had prepped, by that time we had prepped a block for Spintron testing. We had our cylinder heads we were going to test, four camshafts we're going to test, we have three different sets of valve springs we're going to test, we have two different sets of rocker arms we're going to test, and uh, it's a full two days worth of work. Two different sets of lifters, an 842 Johnson lifter, which is a stock body size, and also 903 diameter Johnson lifter. We wanted to see if that 903 lifter um, had increased performance characteristics and better stability, less deflection than the 842 lifter. So day one, you know, we had about a half a day, over a half a day, just getting set up to where we could run our first test. And uh, our first test, we actually were really close. First camshaft we started with ended up being the best camshaft profile in terms of lobe design. Uh, it was a little over 800 lift, I think 802 thousandths lift. <laughs> And it worked really good to about 88, 8900 RPMs. It did absolutely everything we wanted until we decided to push over 9000 RPM. When we decided to push over 9000 RPM, we noticed that. There a little bit of something left on the table. We uh, did nothing but shim the valve springs to about 50, 55 thousandths from Colbine, and immediately we picked up another 300 RPMs of valve train stability. You gotta be kidding me. Five or, six, five or six runs that first day. So then we adjourned and took notes and, and got our game plan together for the following days. So we tested the other camshafts. Some of them were stable to 85, 86, 700 RPMs, but none that had the durability at high RPMs that the, that the first camshaft did. So we knew we had our winter camshaft, so we went back to it. We tested a variety of push rods. Manton made us some, uh, was kind enough to make us some really nice custom push rods to test. So we tested, uh, you know, tapered in versus, you know, straight 716ths. Uh. Uh, the Jezels ended up being better 
um, on the Spintron than the Mantons by a good bit, uh, but the Mantons were much heavier and proved to be just harder to control for the valve train. They're a great option for up to about 8,500 RPMs, but beyond that, um, there's just too much mass to control with this hydraulic roller valve train. Next valve spring to test was going to be a PSI 1513 ML, and that ended up being the magic combination. We had our winning combo. We had our um, Jezel Rockers, our best camshaft profile, our Johnson 842 lifters, and our PSI Springs. Then we did some basically static hold tests. So we, we were holding the engine at that RPM for like five to eight seconds to see if staying at that RPM would upset the valve train. And it did not. Hold five seconds. Hold. Five seconds, yeah. Is that long Um, you know, I think for a ridiculously simple setup that doesn't use a bunch of exotic parts, this is incredibly good. I mean, you got a hydraulic lifter, you're going to 9,000 RPM, it doesn't have some ridiculously monster valve spring on it or something like that. Like, this is not common, right? Like, this is a really, really good, stable system. Now you've got a good cylinder head where you got airflow to be able to take an engine up there. Like, it's, it's going to change some people's minds, I think. It changed mine. Uh, we ended up achieving a, 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 clean, a clean pull to 9,350 RPMs, which well exceeded our goal. And the valve train was extremely happy. So we were all excited. And I think Ben Strader was even excited. And he gave us a little testimonial at one point uh, uh, that was very, very kind to him. Uh, and he was a really, really uh, a, a great host. We I want to give a special thanks to everyone involved. This is a, it's not a one-man operation. It's not a one-face operation. There's many hands that help you know, with this project. We really enjoyed working on this project together as a team, and, and I think we, uh, we had a lot of fun, and we learned a lot, and I'd like to formally acknowledge and thank everybody that was involved on my team with uh, uh, Justin and all the guys at the shop, Justin McClendon, uh, Brad West, uh, worked on this project very hard, James Zajac, you know, Kelly Duncan, uh, David Pickle, uh, all the team at Creech GPI as well as, of course, Ryan Stevens and the team here and our friend at, uh, friend John with CID. And I'd really like to send a shout out to Ben Strader with EFI University, who was, who was a perfect gentleman through this whole project and uh, really th rolled out the red carpet and showed us hospitality, Arizona style. We really enjoyed our trip out there and, and uh, I'd like to thank all, all those guys involved.